there we are, singing again, some 35 years ago. The young man with the guitar is Mr. Chester Atkins, or Chet Atkins, as he's known to the world, one of the greatest guitar players of all time. He just happened to play guitar for us for about eight years, and lucky we were to have him. That's me with the accordion. My name's Helen. Right behind me there, you see my youngest sister, Anita Carter. Miss Goosebump Boyce of 1950, that's what a lot of the disc jockeys called her back then. You'll know what I mean when you hear her sing. And the other one there, that's our sister June, the ornery one, you can see that. And the lady with the guitar, that's our mother, Maybelle Carter. This show is about her music, her family, her friends, her followers, and most of all about the way she played that guitar that is sometimes called the Carter Square. Scott County, the rural southwest Virginia. It sure is beautiful country. And looking at it like this, you might think it never changes. But the way of life here has changed considerably since the turn of the century. In those days, you could see log cabins scattered throughout the mountains. People traveled by horse and wagon along these country roads. Or they walked the valley, or poor valley as it was called. It lay between the knobs and Clinch Mountain. The people who lived here were a proud and independent breed. They worked on the land. They were self-sufficient, and they made their own way. About that time, about the 1920s, you could have seen a strikingly beautiful young girl walking these very same country roads. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. She was a prodigy even before she was in her teens. She mastered the guitar, the auto harp, the banjo, and several other instruments in her own unique style. A style that has been copied and imitated by countless thousands of musicians the whole world over all these years. And she was to become my mother-in-law and my favorite fishing buddy, Maybelle Carter. Far away on a hill into the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. In Clinch Mountain Home, Maybell played the melody on the bass strings, fingering partial chords, like she did on Keeping the Sunny Side. Later on, she developed some intricate and complicated melody runs on the bass strings, too. She emphasized the bottom notes on the guitar by using a thumb pick and two steel finger picks. In the 60s, it seemed like most of the folk singers used her method to play their guitars. A lot of country and western players do that now, but Mother Maybell was the first. And that's why music scholars have called it the Carter Scratch. Mother Maybell influenced me along the way, as she did a lot of other country musicians. Country music was originally called hillbilly music, because the folks who sang it were from the hills. And in those days, a lot of people looked down on those they called hillbillies. Let's just say you probably wouldn't find anyone singing their music in Carnegie Hall, even though it is original American music. As we all know, country music has come a long way, and one of the reasons it's been so well accepted is because of one woman and her music, Mother Maybelle Carter.
The 30s are pretty much thought to be the golden age of country music. That's when Mother Maybelle, her cousin Sarah, and Sarah's husband, A.P. Carter, started singing. Maybelle's husband, Ezra, and A.P. Carter were brothers. They sang at ice cream suppers, schools, courthouses, anywhere people gathered. Little did they know then the impact that their music would have on future generations of singers. And I was one of those singers. And I'd just like to say personally that no one in this business has ever inspired me more nor influenced me more than Mother Maybelle Carter. But back to the beginnings. One day A.P. Carter heard that Victor Talking Machine Company was holding auditions over in Bristol, Tennessee. So A.P., Sarah, and Maybelle went over and recorded some songs for talent scout Ralph Peer. The very first song they recorded was Pure Country. Bury Me Under the Weeping Willow, all about a poor young girl who got left at the altar on her wedding day. A five-year contract with Victor Record Company followed, and the Carter family was well on its legendary way. Well, sir, right now, neighbors, we have some wonderful folks back here we want you to meet, some people I know you're going to enjoy just a whole lot. Let's give them a great big welcome, the one and only, the Carter family. Thank you, Ernest. We'd like to do one called Hearts of Stone.
That was the old song, Bury Me Under the Weeping Willow. That was the, one of the very first session that the Carter family recorded in Bristol, Tennessee in August of 1927. Hi there. I'm Helen Carter, Mother Maybelle's oldest daughter, and today I'm here to give you a little history and demonstration of her music. I'm really privileged today to have one of Mama's grandsons here who just happens to be my son, David Carter Jones, and he's going to help me, and I'm awful glad to have him, and hopefully he'll be carrying on this family tradition long after I'm gone. It's a real pleasure to be here in Green Hall, here in Green, Texas, too. You know, this hall reminds me of some of the places we used to play when we were children, when we were working, with, especially with the old Carter family. But right now, I'd like to take Mama's old guitar. And by the way, this is the old guitar that Mama used on so many of the old Carter family songs. Daddy bought her this guitar in 1929. I think it's a 28 model L5 Gibson. And right now, I'm going to show you the three basic styles that Mother played. The most famous of these is undoubtedly the old, the, what they call the Carter scratch. You know, speaking of Carter scratch, one time, Mama went to L.A. and played a coffee house back in the 60s. And a bunch of the college students kept coming in to Mother and wanting her to play the Carter Scratch. Well, she had no idea what they were talking about, but evidently, she finally figured out the way she picked the melody on the bass and then stirred with her fingers. That's what they, why they called it the Carter Scratch. So I'd like to demonstrate that style to you right now on one of their old songs. Let's try Foggy Mountain Top, David. What do you say? See, I'm playing with the thumb and stirring with the fingers. There. That's my version of the Carter Scratch. You know, Mama didn't only play the Carter Scratch, she also played some blues. Back in probably the late 20s and early 30s, she went over to Kingsport, which just happened to be about 16 miles from where we were raised in southwestern Virginia, and she met an old black man. His name was Esley Riddle, and she loved the way he picked the guitar. He played the blues, so she tried to learn to play the guitar kind of like he did. And Here's one the original Carter family used to do called the Cannonball Blues. But in the 1950s, Mother June, Anita, and I recorded this on Columbia Records, and we arranged it and changed the title because it had a line in there we liked real well called He's Solid Gone. So, and I'd like to say, too, that Mother used two steel finger picks and the thumb pick when she played this, but now I prefer the plastic finger picks because and I use three because I lose a lot of picks. In case I lose one, I got another finger to go. Let's try a little bit of He's Solid Gone. See, you play the melody with your fingers. You got your rhythm with your thumb. version of that. I don't play it quite like my mother, I'm sorry to say, but hopefully you get the idea of how she played it. She also played with an old flat pick. She just took an old flat pick. She played songs like The Dixie Darling and The Red Wing. I'd like to try to play you all a little bit of Red Wing now if I can get my fingers going.
See how I picked the melody with the flat pick? And uh, she also used a flat pick on an old song called The Coal Miner's Blues. I like this. The Carter family wrote this song about the coal miners back in Kentucky, West Virginia, and Tennessee. three styles that mama played and all the songs she played probably the most well remembered and the best is the old song she played with the Carter scratch style called the wildwood flower and here's our mother playing it for you now on a video right now is my younger sister. Hi there, Anita. Hi, Helen, and thank you very much. You know, some of my first memories are of Del Rio, Texas, when I was about four years old. And my mama would wake me up about four o'clock in the morning, and we'd drive across the border to Mexico to sing on XERA. Now, this radio station had two 500,000-watt transmitters, and we could be heard almost anywhere in the world. The Carter family had a live early morning show five days a week. I'd go over and go to sleep in Mama's guitar case and sleep until she'd wake me to sing some harmony with her, or sometimes I'd sing a song by myself. But when I finished, I'd go right back to that guitar case and go back to sleep. I remember Mama taking me down to Mexico a lot of times to hear the music. She loved to hear those guitars, and I believe the way that she played the music for You Are My Flower came from her love of this style of music. So Helen, why don't you show them how she played it? And David, you pick along with us and sing whenever you want to. Let's try, what do you say? Just as blue. The day is just 
Carter family songs have influenced a lot of singers and writers through the years. One song, Little Darling Pal of Mine, made such an impression on a man named Woody Guthrie that he used the melody for his classic, This Land is Your Land. And another was Thinking Tonight of My Blue Eyes. This tune was used for other songs like The Great Speckle Bird and The Wild Side of Life. I'll Be All Smiles Tonight was in the first album that Mom, Helen, and June and I ever recorded and a young man by the name of Waylon Jennings was a DJ at the time, and he loved this song so well that when he started recording and moved to Nashville, he asked me to record a duet with him. And this is when we did our recording of I Got You, which was the first top five record that Waylon ever had. And all of this happened because of the Carter family song, I'll Be All Smiles Tonight. I'll deck my Brown with roses, my loved one may be there, and chills that others gave me will shine within my hand. mighty pretty ladies, some real southern bells out on our stage now, and I think all you folks know who I'm talking about. Let's make them welcome. Mother Maybell and the Carter Sisters. Hey! Hey! Happy to 
Don Juan. There's a fellow who down in Mexico. That's a senorita dream. certainly wouldn't be complete without our other sister. So here she is, June Carter Cash. Hun, you talk a while. All right, that's part of what I do. <laughs> it's good to be sitting here in these chairs with Helen and Anita, and there's no way you can do Carter Scratch music without this old auto harp. It's the first thing Mother Maybell Carter ever taught me to play. And sometimes when I'm playing it, it takes me back to some of the songs that are my favorites of the things they did. They had unusual ways of talking and singing about things, and this particular song is how to get through the pearly gates. Not just walk through easy or fly through like an angel, but to have 50 miles of elbow room on either side to get through. And here is the song Elbow Room. 1,200 miles its length and breadth The four square city stands It's gym that walls of jasper shine not made by human hands and it won't Yes. 
It's a lot of fun to be sitting in these old chairs because that's the way we started so many years ago, sitting in the chairs. It's the way the Carter family started, and we got up and danced around the stage and did a lot since then, played with a lot of music. But there's no sound like this gentle little Carter family sound, no song like a great old Carter family song that makes you remember where your roots are and where your family is, and maybe this has touched you because this song has sure been good to us, and it's for Mother Maybell because... It was kind of like Mama's song in a way. I was standing by my window on one cold and cloudy day when I saw that her sky.
meet and greet Miss June Carter. Yeah. Hello, June. And you've been gone, ain't you? I know yeah, you I, have. I've been gone you, several you, times. You, you, you've been out there. <laughs> this is the last time not here. Yeah, that's what I said. No, I'm talking about, Carter. You know, you went out there to, to Hollywood and, and you've been in them pictures, ain't you? Oh, I made a movie for Gataway Productions. Did you really? Yeah, I sure did. You, did you know I was out there, too? He was. Yeah, I was out there. I was out there in Hollywood. I, I made several pictures while I was out there. Is that right? Uh -huh. I didn't know that. Jim. Yeah, I did. They was X-raying my liver at the time. <laughs> <laughs> must have been a good story. It was, probably was. I got a real, uh, well, I got a real important liver, you know. Is that right? Yeah, I didn't. I don't want to go into my liver. I was telling you about my 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 uh, what I was doing out there in Hollywood. Well, what they was had, you doing out there? Well, they had lots of bathing beauty contests out there. I know one I went to was just full of big old fat women and little old skinny women. Is that right? Mm -hmm. They was uh, uh, one big old fat lady out there. She was the fattest thing you ever saw. She was the fat that she, that, well, well, they didn't measure her for her, uh, for her. <laughs> 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 they just went gawking at me with that big old long pointed nose of yours. I don't like it anything said. I tell you about that big I was old trying fat. to find your face, and I don't see nothing but mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just that uh, I'll hold it this way and talk this way. Oh, pardon. <laughs> no, it was this big fat uh, woman, Carl. Uh, she, had she was a, in the beauty contest. Mm -hmm, and, Big fat woman. Yeah, she was. And th they didn't measure her for, for her bathing suit. They had to survey her. She, <laughs> she, 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 she had a, a little bathing suit while there wasn't nothing hardly at all of it. I've never, I've never seen birth in my life. Just Is a little, little right? piece of a bathing suit and a moth got in it. Is that right? Yeah, a moth did. It's probably a good thing. I think it fit him better than it did her. <laughs> Too. Yeah, uh, she didn't have no figure at all. If it hadn't been for oh, her well, Adam's right. apple, she wouldn't have had a figure at all. <laughs> <laughs> I had a bathing suit. It was one of them backless, strapless, bottomless, topless bathing suits. Yeah? I didn't get to wear it, though. The judge said it was a belt. <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome back, folks. October 23rd, 1978. We lost our little blue-eyed mother, Maybell. My sons, David and Danny, wrote this song as a special tribute to her on the day she died. Today, I'd like to ask David, along with June's daughter, Rosie, Nita's daughter, Lori, to sing this song for our mother, Maybell. Maybell, a lady that would love so well. Sometimes when I'm feeling all alone, she's right here with me, even though she's gone to better days that won't dry the tears from my that song. Makes you feel real good when your own kids sing it, too. Really does. But you know what? I think the line that I like the best in it is the line about she made a place for me. All mamas do that, you know. They make a place for all of us. And somewhere in your life, a mama's made a place for you. And we'd like to sing about that. And I didn't tell it so well, but Helen did and Anita did. And they wrote this song about mama sang. So it's for all mamas who've ever sung a song. Learn to sing. 
For you, Mama. Good night. Well, right now, I think it's about time that we call on Miss June Carter and all the Carter sisters once again. How about it, neighbors? Huh? Thank you, and we have a bunch of the young ones here too. Well, in need of Mama May Bella, we have a little tune called Love. Sisters and Mommy Maybell. Oh, 